In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a stylized pine tree like the one you see right now using Blender and Substance Painter. So we're going to start with creating the branch. And what we got to do for that is install the sapling tree gen add-on in the Blender preferences. When you get the add-on installed, you can press Shift A and under curves select sapling tree gen. Now we can see that it created a tree for us and you should be able to find a small window on the bottom left. We're gonna open that and hit load preset. And there we just click on small pine. What we're gonna do now is go to branch splitting and increase the levels to 4. Right after that we go to leaves and check the show leaves box. This can take a few moments, especially if you get a slower PC. But when leaves have appeared you can play with these settings here, like the leaf count or the leaf scale and the leaf scale X and V. Also what I did was change the leaf shape from rectangular to hexagonal. So just play with these settings until you think it looks good. So theoretically we could just use that tree, but it has way too many polygons. What we're gonna do now is select the tree and under object convert it to a mesh. Now with the stem and leaf selected, we go into the edit mode and try to cut off one branch. This can be a bit tricky, but I'd recommend you to go into the wireframe mode and hit C so you can select the vertices easier. And a really nice shortcut which you can use here is Ctrl L to select the linked vertices. When you manage to select a branch, you can press P and separate selection. Then back in object mode, we can simply delete the other parts of the tree, which we're not gonna be needing anymore. Now try to rotate it and move it into the world origin. Before we join it though, we're gonna create a material for the leaves and the wood. When you got that, you can select both objects and press Ctrl J to join. Because we wanna texture it, we of course gotta unwrap it. So in edit mode, first press A to select all vertices and then U and Smart UV Project. I checked the scale to bounce box and slightly increased the island margin. When you got that, you can select the branch and export it as an FBX. Now we're gonna launch Substance Painter for the first time. Simply drag and drop the model into the software and set the document resolution to 2048. Now the first thing that we always gotta do when working in Substance Painter is bake the model. For that we simply go into the texture set settings and hit bake mesh maps. There we're gonna set the output size to 2048 and increase the dilation width to 128. Set both the max frontal distance and the max rear distance to 0.1. And for the anti-aliasing we're gonna select the subsampling 2x2. Then simply hit bake selected textures and let it bake. Now we can get started with the texturing. Don't worry if the needles look weird like this. This happens because they are one sided and Substance Painter only shows one side, but it'll look normal in Blender. So we're starting with the wood and just add a new fill layer by pressing this bucket. Only activate the color and roughness because we don't need the other ones. Give it a dark brown color and increase the roughness to something really high like 0.8 or 0.9. Then we click the bucket again to create a new fill layer and hold alt and click the color. This will deactivate all the other material components. Then we use the color picker to select the brown from earlier. But of course, because we want to see a difference, we make it a bit darker. Then we right click the fill layer and add a black mask. And we right click it again and hit add fill. Right after that, we go into the asset library at the bottom, click this little icon and search for grunge. Now you can use whichever grunge map you like, I use the grunge map 5 and I drag and drop it into the grayscale box at the left. At the top of the left window, you can play with the scale a bit. In my case, something between 15 and 20 looks pretty good. But now I want to make it pop more. So I click on the fill layer again and add a height component. And if you move the slider, you can see how it affects the model. If you want, you can create another fill layer with a dark brown color and add a black mask and a dirt generator. This generator adds dirt in the ridges and just adds a bit of detail. The next thing we gotta do is create a folder, which you can name however you want, and put all of our layers into it. Now we can right click it and hit create smart material. This saves the material we just created, so we can later use it on our tree. Now for the needles, we just create another fill layer with a pretty dark green color and a high roughness. If you want, you can create another fill layer with a dark green color with a grunge map to add a bit of structure. Then we create another fill layer with a brighter green and a black mask and we add a generator and select the position generator. This gives us a bit of a gradient effect, but we gotta invert it so it comes from the bottom to the top. Now we can export both the materials, we only need the base color, the roughness and the height for both of them. And then we can go back into Blender and put those materials onto the model. 
I'd recommend you to use the Node Wrangler add-on. With that, you can click the principal BSDF and hit Ctrl Shift T and select the materials which you want and it will automatically connect them for you. But what we gotta do for both of the materials is decrease the scale of the displacement a bit. Now we want to render out an image of this branch, so we add a camera and make it look at the branch from the top. And also for some natural lighting, I'd recommend you to use an HDRI and an area light from the top. And also in the render settings under film, you have to check this transparent box. If you got all that, you can press F12 and render out the image and save it somewhere you'll find it. Now we got our branch and we can start working on the trunk. Okay, so what we're gonna do is add a cylinder and scale it up in the C axis. Our goal here is that it's thick at the bottom and very thin at the top. So you can add one or two loop cuts or extrude it out at the top. Now for smaller detail we want to sculpt the model, but what we gotta do before that is in object mode we press Ctrl A with the model selected and hit apply rotation and scale. And now we can go into the sculpting tab at the top. What we gotta do here first is check the little box next to the Dyne Topo and then click it. Here we set the detailing to constant detail and the detail size to something like 15. This is where the fun part begins. So just use the draw brush to create the texture of the bark. Later you can use the scrape brush to create these flat surfaces. When we're done with that we can select the crease brush and create these ridges. Now we're done with the sculpting and we could just import the model we just made into Substance Painter, but because it has over 100,000 polygons it's pretty much unusable for almost everything. So we're gonna create a low poly version of our tree and then bake it later. So we add a cylinder and at the bottom left we set the vertices to 16. And then we press S and then 0.5 to scale it to half the size. Now scale it in the C axis so it's as long as the trunk. I'd recommend you to go into wireframe mode for that. Try to scale the top and the bottom of the cylinder so it doesn't overlap with our original model. And when we're done with that, we add a bunch of loop cuts, so I added 50 by first pressing Ctrl R on the keyboard and then 50. Now with our cylinder selected, we go into the modifiers and add a shrink wrap modifier. We can leave all these settings as they are and as a target we select the model we've sculpted. And now you can see how our cylinder wraps around the model. You can now apply the modifier and call the low poly model tree underscore LP for low poly and our high poly model tree underscore HP for high poly. Now hide the high poly model and then select the low poly model and go into edit mode. Now select the top and bottom rows of the model and hit Ctrl E and then mark seam. Then select one vertex at the top and then hold Ctrl and select the vertex in the bottom row. This should also select the vertices between these two and then you can also press Ctrl E and then mark seam. Then we press A to select all vertices and then U and unwrap. That's it for unwrapping, now you can export both the models and start Substance Painter again. So just like for the branch, drag and drop the model into the software, but this time I went for a resolution of 4096. Then click the Bake Mesh Maps button again and do everything exactly like for the branch, except for changing the output size to 4096 and at the high definition meshes we select our high poly model. Now after we've baked we can see that the details from the high poly model have been transferred onto the low poly model via a normal map. Now because we made a smart material earlier, instead of creating a new material, we just drag and drop the old one onto the model. We can open the folder on the right now and got all the layers from before. And I personally think it looks a bit better when we decrease the size of the grunge map a bit. Then what you can do is add another fill layer with a brighter brown tone and add another black mask and a curvature generator. This generator highlights the edges of our model and you can play with the settings a bit here. Then for some moss we add another fill layer with a dark green color, add a black mask and then a position generator. Like before we gotta invert it and increase the global balance a bit. And like that we got some moss coming from the bottom. Now we go to export textures again and this time we need to export the base color, the roughness, the height and the normal OpenGL. Back in Blender we can again use the Node Wrangler add-on and Ctrl Shift T to import our material. Now our trunk is finished and we can import our branch again. So go to Files, Import and Import Images as Planes. If you don't see this button you have to install the Import Images as Planes add-on. So then select the PNG we rendered out earlier and import it. When we got it imported the first thing we gotta do is increase the roughness to 1 and decrease the specular to 0. Then in the edit mode give it a few loop cuts and deform it with the proportional editing. 
Now select our trunk model again and go into weight paint. And we're gonna create two vertex groups. Uh, the first one will be for the size of the branches. For that, we use the gradient tool to create a gradient from the bottom to the top. And then we add a second vertex group and create another gradient, but this time from the top to the bottom and make sure that the bottom of the tree is completely blue. Then we can select the tree again and create a particle system. We wanna check the advanced box and then under render, we use the branch as our instance object. Under vertex groups, we use our first vertex group for the length and the second for the density. Now we can reduce the number of branches and scale them up, but here we see that they are rotated in the wrong way. So first we have to go to rotation and check the little box. And then we set the orientation axis to global C and then randomize the face to 2. Then we select the branch again and in edit mode we rotate the branch like you see right here. Now we can randomize the rotation a bit more and you'll maybe see that the top branches are way too small so we have to go into weight paint again and change that. Now for a final touch, because the tip of the tree looks a bit weird, you can manually place them around the top. And that's how you can create a stylized pine tree in Blender and Substance Painter. Thanks for watching this video till the end, I'd always be happy about some feedback in the comments, bye.